God has made men to be men, to be distinct from women, to have testosterone, and to find musculature. Yet the average 22-year-old man today has the same testosterone levels that the average Social Security eligible man had a little over 20 years ago. All you have to do to see this in the most vivid way you can is to compare what people look like today to your parents' or grandparents' wedding photos. The fattest person in those ruffled tuxedos or bridesmaid dresses with puffy sleeves would look emaciated by comparison today. You also see this when watching footage of people on the street or on the beach from 50 years ago. Everyone had normal BMIs. Obesity, much less morbid obesity, was extremely rare. Why is this the case? Why are we so fat? And why do we keep getting fatter? We've mentioned a little bit already about how Christianity has become so Gnostic uh, that mm-hmm. we've completely severed the spiritual from the physical. And you know, at the time of recording this, there's been some Twitter spats online about biblical masculinity and guys are trying to say, hey, you know what? Part of masculinity is physical vitality, Mm -hmm. strength, uh, duration, those kinds of things. Um, And then others are saying, well, you know, again, it's, they can't speak in generality. So it's like, but if I can find one man who's a godly (laughs) man and, you know, and also happens to be a quadriplegic, then, you know, then I can say that masculinity has nothing to do. Your principle is invalid. Yeah, exactly. Which that's not the way it works. But all yeah. that being said, like we've become super Gnostic, um, mm-hmm. meaning that you know we, we've severed the the physical from the spiritual. The spiritual is all that matters. John Eldridge gets a bad rap, you know, mm-hmm. with oh, like wild heart. heart. Yeah. yeah, exactly yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, but I just want to say from the outset, as we go into this episode, uh, I think you know it's easy for our antagonist to say, "Well, you know, but uh, you're you're not." Uh, what you're, you know, saying is the ideal, you know, like, well, you look like you could lose a few pounds yourself, chubby, you know, or like, you know, and, and I think like, here's the whole thing. Um, call it, you know, conservatives, the new right, Christian nationalists, whatever you want to call it. The guys who are advocating for biblical masculinity to have teeth and for it to actually have tangible attributes like mm-hmm. physical strength and health and those kinds of things, we're not doing that because um, because it suits us, because yeah. it's convenient. We're not making those kinds of arguments because we all have raging six packs and because we all have this, you know, or that. Well, speak um, for yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, we're doing it because we're saying, no, but I think this is the biblical ideal, yeah. even though I myself fall short of mm-hmm. it, that, um, that I'm actually going to, you know, so it's not... There's a bunch of young guys who are in fantastic, perfect shape, yeah. and it just it's convenient for them to say that you know being in good physical shape is a part of biblical masculinity. No, we're saying yeah. despite the fact that we too have been eating you know from mm-hmm. the the trash world trough you know mm-hmm. of soy and all these different you know mm-hmm. uh, we but we recognize there's a problem with that. There's yeah. a problem, and I, I don't know who said it. Uh, probably a bunch of guys have said it, but. Uh, when I think of the physical attributes of manhood, I think like one way to sum it up uh, succinctly is that a man should be, uh, he should be hard to kill. That yeah. like, um, yeah. that a man should be hard to kill. It sh- yeah. You shouldn't be able to, it's like, okay, like I'm not immortal. I'm just a man. Um, but if you want to hurt my family, you're going to have to kill me yeah. and it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah. No, I, I think, um, your point is is such a good one. It would be very easy for us to say the convenient thing. And quite frankly, a lot of our detractors in this space are mm-hmm. saying the convenient thing. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, they're fat and they're saying that, that godliness has <laughs> yeah. nothing to do with being in shape. Or even yeah. if they're not fat, they're not where they want to be. Right. Let's just mm-hmm. say it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, you know, when when we're talking about these things, we're, we're looking at, look, there, there's a way of life that quite frankly, very few of us have lived and maybe none of us have lived mm-hmm. um, that is better than our current way of life. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we recognize that that's step one. And then mm-hmm. doing something about it is, is step two. You can't just recognize mm-hmm. it. you got to do something about it. Mm-hmm. And for different people, it's going to look differently. Like not everybody's going to be able to cut out or have the will to cut out seed oils instantly. But mm-hmm. there are things that everybody can do. And and we're saying we should stay. We should we should start that yeah. right now. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I I. I think about, um, you know, where I was when I, I first kind of went on, on the journey of, of discovering that things are not quite right with, <laughs> uh, the food we consume and, and just our, our, our lifestyle. 
um, what the lifestyle that's expected where you're just stationary all day sitting in, in, a you know, less comfortable chairs than these, uh, behind a desk. And I was, you know, I was, I was topping the scales at like, uh, close to 310 pounds. And I knew this is not healthy. I don't want to, I don't want to live this way. And I, I still would like work out, but I was, I was not in good physical condition. And I realized like, no, I need to, I need to lose weight and it's hard. Uh, it's, it's hard when you just say yes to every food because who cares, uh, to be like, no, I'm going to keep it within this certain calorie limit and then do that for a year and, and have the willpower to, to continue living that way is extremely difficult. It, it, it's painful, um, sometimes, and, but, uh, when, when you lose weight and you get stronger, uh, at the same time. Um, and you're in better physical shape. You can you can run longer. Uh, with, you have better stamina. You can run faster. Um, all of those things. You begin to feel. You know, like right now at 37, I feel better than I did when I was 25. Mm-hmm. Um, except you know my my knees and joints will ache a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like the but physically, I feel like I can I can do more. I can I can lift more. I can I can run more. And um, just the the um, psychological effect that that has on you. Uh, it, it changes you. It, it, it makes you uh, more masculine. Um, and I mean, it, and there's physiological reasons for that too. Like, uh, you know, excess lipidity lowers your testosterone levels and, and testosterone is, you know, we can joke around about it and, and, and laugh, but it really is the, the hormone that makes you masculine. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, and it, it gives you, you know, strength and confidence and all, all of these things. And so, you know, even from the outset, from the what we read in the book, um, the fact that testosterone levels are so low today is not random or an accident or anything like that. It's that we've, we've t- turned into the people like in the movie wall E where they're, right. you're just, you know, it's sitting in your thing, moving around. And, and when the guy falls out, he can't get back into his thing. Like the robots have to pick him up and plop him back into it. Like that's, that's, that's our, you know, almost our way of life as it exists now. And that's not that's not how God built men to be. Um, and you look at it, and yeah, you look at like the the, the statues from antiquity and, and how the Greeks viewed the ideal body type, like uh, uh, Porphyrus, you know, the spear carrier. There's a there's one version of it in, in the um, Metropolitan Museum of Art in in, uh, in Minneapolis, in Minnesota, where I'm from. And this guy's, you know. He, he's this Greek statue and he's strong and he, he uh, and you, you see this and this was their ideal. This is what a, what a man should look like. And it, it's not as though we're taking and people, the detractors would hear that and think, well, well, you're, that's a pagan understanding of what humanity is. But all of, all of people everywhere have, have viewed, okay, men should be strong and they should be capable of, of doing violence if they have to. And and you look at it today, like here you have, you know, these, these obese people that like you push them and they'll just tip over. And like, that's, and men like that, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. You can't defend a family. Like Joel says, right. you can't defend a family that way. If, if somebody just, you know, barely taps you and you, you crumple, uh, you need to be able to defend your family, especially today. Uh, like the amount of crime and, and violence and, and the direction things are going, um, you need to be able to, um, be hard to kill. Right. And, and I, I, you know, so I realized that I, I, I lose a bunch of weight and it, it like drastically changes your whole mentality of, 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 of how right. you operate on, even on a day-to-day basis. And this is one of those areas where it seems like conservatives have just kind of thrown in the towel and, yeah. you know, just surrendered it to the left. So like this, and also you, you think of the environment, yeah. you know, so like there's a portion where you say like in the book, you know, like, we don't want to just eat cheeseburgers and burn tires in our backyard to own the yeah. libs, you yeah. know? So like, yeah. um, no, like the environment is, um, that's not a leftist thing. That's a Christian thing. Yeah. You and, know? and the like, leftist and, environmentalism is really fake. Right. Too. Explain just, that for a second. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it really is this like top down bureaucratic thing that they think, oh, if we just replace all the light bulbs, that'll stop the wor- world from destroying itself. You know, like if we just do the tinker with these little bureaucratic things, you know, use paper straws, uh, that'll fix everything. And it's like, no, it, it doesn't. And it, and what it does, it's like a typical liberal thing where it's like you outsource any care you have about, uh, uh about the actual environment. You outsource that to other people that take care of it rather than no, like I, um, I, I pick up trash by the roadside and I take care of, uh, you know, 
you know, clean up parks and things like that. Like I, um, and, and, um, care about my immediate environment, uh, way more. And you'll, you'll see that, especially in like, um, th that still exists in, in like rural kind of blue collar red state areas where you have all sorts of different hunting associations that really take care of the land. And these are not people that have a high view of Greta Thunberg. Right. Right. These are, these are people that just want nice, clean uh, waters to fish in and, and land to hunt in, um, and that they can, they can walk through. It's not full of trash and garbage. Um, and even like, like the, the national parks, like creating national parks was like this very right wing, uh, thing. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't like, yeah, okay. Teddy Roosevelt, he was kind of this progressive, but it was, it was very much, um, a, a right wing project. We want to maintain these places that are, are natural beauties and wonders, uh, for posterity to, to see, we don't want them full right. of strip malls and garbage everywhere. Um, there's right. a, there's a reason why like you don't have national parks in third world countries, right? Um, there's just trash all over the place. And those countries are the ones that don't, they don't care about the environment at all. Uh, they right. don't have, uh, you know, well-ordered societies like, like we used to. So, yeah. yeah. Also, uh, so that's, you know, on the environment front, back to food, nutrition, um, now I've even struggled with this. I'll, I'll confess, you know, for myself. On one hand, like I think of, you know, okay, in terms of hunger, there's a lot mm -hmm. less people in terms of percentage. It, there's more people in terms of, you know, overall numeric number. Uh, way more people in the world today than there was even just a short time ago. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, percentage-wise, there's way less hunger than mm -hmm. there was a short time ago. Mm -hmm. And so. For you know, for all three of us, we would prescribe to postmillennialism in terms of our eschatology, um, mm -hmm. and we would see you know like you know he comes to make you know his blessings flow as far as yeah. the curse is found, um, pushing back on global hunger, uh, hunger and feeding <laughs> people, all those kinds of things. Like so, yeah. praise God for that. But there's something to be said, like okay, but what what is uh, what yeah. constitutes food? Well, and we and we have you know you almost said it. We have global homo hunger. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. now right. And, yeah, and you're right. I mean, it's it's the same argument though, where you could make the same quasi post millennial argument that well, there's way more wealth now than there there ever used to be, so that must be good. But we we talked about this before that like the wealth that we have is largely fictitious. Like yeah, we have lots of consumer goods and things like that. And, but that's come at a cost, mm -hmm. right? It's, There's always it's trade offs. Destabilized yeah. our whole yeah. our whole society. You know, sending sending women to work, take you know, destroying households, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, you get much more production, but you you've eaten through the seed corn. And it's the same. It's it's similar with food. Like yeah, we produce way more food, but is it the kind of food that gives people you know healthy um, you know healthy lives, or is it the kind of food that makes them fat and sick? Right. Um, so it's like uh, yeah, you, it's I mean. You can eat it and it will satiate you, uh, not very well, but it will satiate you. Um, but it, it's not something that like in, in like this kind of idealist post-millennial sense, right? We wouldn't have, you know, all of this acreage of corn and soybeans everywhere. We would have pastures where, where cows are grazing and mm. you, and you can, you can do that. It just, it, it it's much less, uh, you make less money that mm. way, right? You, you aren't maximizing, you know, maximizing the, um, the profitability of that acreage, like right. you would with corn and soybeans and feedlots and, and and so forth, and and so the result is um, ultimately, you know, a diet that is, is is really unlike any in human history where people are fed. Like the the baseline for human history is people are hungry. Like poor people are starving, right. um, and now all of our poorest people in America are are fat and diabetic, Overweight. you yeah. know, and, and it's like you, you couldn't, if you went back in time and this is a thing that i say a lot in the book, like you go back in time and you tell people 500 years ago, yeah, you know, we've got a lot of poor people in America and you know, the biggest health problem they have is they eat too much food. <laughs> um, they'd be like, that doesn't like, you must be in some kind of paradise. You must be living right. in the garden of Eden. And it's like, no, the food is like barely constitutes its food product and, right. <laughs> and it's it's all like corn oil and soy oil uh that that, that they're consuming and it's it, they, we basically feed all our poor people paint thinner and they blow it up mm. um and like oh that sounds even worse <laughs> yeah all right i'm just gonna say it this show is fantastic you know it's fantastic i know it's fantastic but i'm willing to admit there is one singular problem the waiting zone 
right? You got to wait a whole week for each new episode of this show to drop on Fridays at 4 p.m. Central Time. Unless you go on over to patreon.com forward slash right response ministries. And then you'll be able to binge watch every single episode of an entire season all in one day. So this is a season-based show, right? The whole idea is a deep dive on one singular topic so that you know everything there is to know. Each season comes out in a quarter, right? So a three-month period, anywhere from probably eight to 12 episodes in a season. And the moment that the first episode of a new season drops to the public, then you can go over to patreon.com forward slash right response ministries and watch all of those episodes without having to wait week by week by week for the next episode to publicly drop so you know what to do don't waste any more time binge watch the whole season today yeah it, 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 it there's always trade-offs in these situations yeah. right so you get the calories that you need yeah. to survive <clears throat> but it's simultaneously lowering your quality of life it's simultaneously killing you almost mm -hmm. well maybe not even almost it yeah, is killing well, you yeah yeah and it creates a um, a passivity in you as well. Yeah. yeah. Where, I mean, it's, it's no surprise. Like, you mean, people are always surprised about why did everyone comply with COVID? I mean, we're all like dying here. Right. You know, we're yeah. all like yeah. depressed and d dying. And that's mm -hmm. why people complied with that. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they were engineered that way, even with the food. Right. Yeah. Um, I remember when, when I first realized that the food pyramid was a scam. Yeah, it's a big, yeah. it's a big awakening was, for a lot of yeah, people. That yeah. A, yeah, that was a big moment. Not only is it what? a scam, but it's like inverted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You need fats. <laughs> <laughs> you need animal fat. You need red well, meat. And, and you was, don't need carbs. The whole uh, thing was like, okay, cholesterol, you know, having high cholesterol is really, really, really bad. That's the, you know, the yeah. leading thing uh, for yeah. heart attacks. And uh, the thing that's going to give you bad cholesterol is butter and bacon and fat, you know, eggs. Like eggs yeah. yeah. These kinds of things. Steak, uh, red meat, you know or at least too much red meat. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, meats and those kinds of, and fats, you know, those kinds of things are, is what's gonna give you, you know, bad cholesterol and that's what's gonna give you a heart attack, uh, but very little mention of sugar, yeah. you know? And so then it was like, well, the thing that's good for you is grains, you know? So that's yeah. like at the bottom, it's yeah. all these if grains, you, but then what happens- Eat pasta all day long, right. you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's but low but fat. I feel, but I yeah. feel terrible when I eat pasta, yeah. like, you know, and yeah. which we rarely do in the Webin household. We eat meat and vegetables and fruit and those, but, um, and luckily I have a wife who helps to take care of us. But with all that, the point is to say that like with, uh, with grains came sugar, like yeah. grocery stores, all of a sudden it became cereal, 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 mm -hmm. cereal, like all mm -hmm. these things. And in all of them was, um, because it's bland, you know? Yeah. And so like, and they wanted people to, you know, to come back and to buy more. And like, mm. so it turns out like, you know, the grains that you eat these things, you know, and it's packed filled with sugar so that it'll actually, you know, sell off the shelf. And it doesn't satiate hunger the same no. way that, you know, meat or those kinds of things. So then you have to eat more of it and you go mm -hmm. back and you're getting, you know, more and more. And it, it does seem like, man, this is just, uh, it's an economic scam. It seems like it's yeah. just like a, a business trick, you know, like yeah. we're going to sell more product. Yeah. Like when I was, um, when I, when I started losing weight and, and became very serious about it, I paid way more for groceries than I did before I started losing weight. Like my, I'm, I'm eating less, but my food budget is going up right. <laughs> because I, I was buying way more meat right. um, and eating other, you know, not, not eating cheap garbage. And it was crazy. Like I could eat a whole steak and some eggs and like, that's my, all of the food I need that day. I don't right. need to, I mean, not even hungry the rest of the day. And it's like, wow, it's almost like God designed the world for meat to satiate you and all of the bread and grains and all this stuff kind of just leaves you hungry and wanting more a couple hours later. Um, that's, oh, that's a reality. Like that's, that's, and that's how people used to live. And, and it's, it's funny, like you have the, like the, the Lindy principle, you know, it comes from Nassim, Nicholas Taleb. Um, where things that have been around for a long time, the likelihood is they're going to be around, you know, at least that long or longer. And, you know, if you think about that, like how did your great grandmother make food? Like what food did she feed your great grandpa? Uh, well, he would wake up and he'd have bacon and eggs. And if it was bread, it was like, you know, hand ground or like stone right, ground right. bread, like, you know, things like that, where it's not, you know, wonder bread off the shelf, you know, thing, thing, things of that nature where it took a lot of work to make that food. And it was, and it was more expensive. 
Uh, but it was usually meats and a lot of fat and uh, some, you know, some vegetables. And that's what the diet consisted of. And it was you know, like whole ingredients. That's what you made. There was no store shelf of processed food to eat from. And that's like a Lindy way of, of eating. And we've, we've gone away from that completely. And there's all sorts of reasons why. I mean, the main, main, mainly financial ones. Um, that you can make a lot more money if you produce boxes, you know, store shelves completely full of Cheez-Its than if you're, you know, if you're just selling meat, <laughs> right? right? There's a lot less money to be made in that right. way. Um, and so that's what's become of our, our diet is, um, it isn't just, I mean, it's easy to like just demonize, oh, well, fast food and, and junk food and, and pop. Other people call it soda, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, that, that that's, that's become the main component of our diet. And that, that's true. It, it has, but it's, it's also because like real food that takes time to make, and a lot of people don't have time, uh, but real food, um, is, is so much healthier, so much better for you. And, and if you eat it, like I, I, I like making, I really like uh, French uh, cuisine and that takes a lot of time usually to make. Um, and it's usually very rich, lots of cream and butter, like butter and everything like families, um, uh, from, from churches we've been at would always say like, oh, if you go to the Iskers to eat, you're going to eat at least three sticks of butter uh, <laughs> with the food that you eat. Uh, but I, I'd eat this way and I would lose weight. It was the craziest thing. You know, like I'm, I'm eating lots of meat and lots of fat and like, wow, um, but the scale keeps going down. What's going on there? And, and it's, it's because I was eating real food uh, really for the first time in my life. And, and all of a sudden, Right. Um, my body is adjusting to that. I'm not as hungry anymore. I have more energy throughout the day, even though I'm eating less food. Um, and, and, you know, I'm finally kind of reverting <laughs> to the way that, uh, the way that people have always lived and you begin to become much, much healthier, but it, it takes a tremendous amount of like conscious effort to not do what everybody else is doing just to get to the, like baseline of how a human being used to look a hundred years ago. Right. Um, like you have to go way out of your way just to have a normal physique from like the 1920s. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, it, and that should tell you something is messed up. Something right. is not right. And then you can have this, you know, pseudo post-millennial argument. Well, we're feeding all the hungry people. And it's like, yeah, but we're, we're making everyone fat and sick and, and ruining their lives, giving them diabetes and, and cancer and things like this. Um, and is that, is that the trade-off we want? You know, right. is that the trade-off that you want to have in this post-millennial future? I, I don't think so. So a lot of our food, it makes us fat, it makes us sick, um, but it also makes us gay, right? They're turning the frogs gay. <laughs> you know? They're turning so, the freaking yeah, frogs yeah. gay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're now, here in Austin with yeah, uh, yeah, uh, exactly, Alex Jones. Alex Jones so. <laughs> yeah. so I'm being a little bit facetious, but, you know, I, it does seem like, you know, there, there is a link between our diet and, and not just when it comes to obesity and not just when it comes to, you know, um, health versus, you know, disease and sickness and diabetes, and, mm -hmm. but also uh, testosterone levels. Like yeah. what you eat, like can actually affect, you know, your testosterone and lower yeah. those things. And so- Let me say this, you know, when 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 we were in the middle of the, the Wuhan flu hysteria, um, I don't know about you guys, but when I would go to the grocery store or wherever I was, was at, you know, there was always a little bit of instant camaraderie you had with someone who didn't wear the mask. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, yeah. And you'd always give them the yeah. other. What I've noticed, <laughs> though, is that it was mostly men that didn't wear the masks. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was pretty much always a pretty healthy looking guy. Yeah, a guy that's yeah. in shape. A guy that's yeah. in shape, a guy larger than I am, you know, like that, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Some women didn't wear masks, too. And it was typically, again, healthy looking women right. yeah. that, that, yeah. that wouldn't do it. Yeah. And so... I, and I, I, I'm wondering, you know, I don't, I don't know the connection, but I can, I can probably assume some of it. Um, but it's, it's just amazing to me because the, mm -hmm. the people that look the least healthy typically were masking up as if they're guarding their health. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you no, know what I mean? Point. Well, it's the same thing with like the, the, va the, um, can we say that? Anyway? You can uh, say the jab, <laughs> whatever. The, uh, um, the experimental medical treatment. Yes. Uh, yes. It, it's the same thing where and, and a lot of it too, with, with health is you don't, um, and, and, and fitness and all of this is it's like, well, if I blimp up to 400 pounds, whatever, uh, but I can just take a pill or I can just get a, a vaccine or I can just, um, have some external thing that happens. If I, if I get so obese, I can't sleep right and get sleep apnea. I can just put on the, the sleep apnea mask and I'll sleep again. Like we haven't, I mean, healthcare in America is nearly 20% of the GDP. 
Uh, so going to the hospital, pharmaceuticals, all of that is like one out of every $5 of things that are produced in America goes to that. And so there are all of these different things that treat these symptoms rather than the main underlying thing, which is our food is killing us. And, but the, the issue there is it's way easier to just eat a whole box of Cheez-Its than it is to, you know, cook a small steak and then have that as your dinner. Uh, it's way easier, more convenient. And it, and it, and, and people and like cheaper. it. Yeah. People, it's people cheaper. like living this way um, because they get comfort out of it. They're, they're depressed. And so they eat more and they get comfort from their food. And, and so rather than having people, you know, have willpower and, and discipline, just eat as much as you want. And we'll, we'll come up with some medical solution we'll take care of it, yeah. uh, to take care of it afterward. And the, and the masks and the vaccine, I think are, are part of that, that whole thing. It's like, well, I'll just take some more pills or I'll just, I'll just do this and I'll just wear the mask. That'll protect my health rather than, oh, I should spend the next year losing a hundred pounds and going to the gym every day and working out really hard. Uh, that'll help my health. Uh, well, that's not even a consideration. Well, yeah, it's like, just the, throw on a little piece of cloth. The, the main things that were shut down during the lockdowns were churches and gyms. Yeah. So it was never really about health. And you know, yeah. like if somebody was trying to play the devil's advocate when you're like, hey, the healthy people are the ones who weren't wearing a mask. And you know, I could just imagine, you know, somebody, you know, saying, well, well, no duh. You they know, have the lowest a, risk factor. Yeah, they have yeah. the lowest risk fa factor. And so the, it's the people who aren't healthy that would wear the mask to protect mm -hmm. them and stuff. It's like, yeah, but but if they were really concerned about, you know, if all these mask wearers were really concerned mm -hmm. about their health, uh, why don't they hop on a treadmill? Why don't yeah. they, you know, like, there's a lot of other things that could be. Just, so really, it's, yeah. not, I, it's not about that. I don't think it's just like, well, all the fatties, you know, wore masks during, you know, yeah. COVID because, um, because they needed it because they were more, you know, at risk. No, but I, I, I think it's more than that. I think it also, I, th I think what you might have been getting at, AD, may, and maybe I'm off, but is uh, the type of person who seemed to fall for all these plays yes. in 2020 mm -hmm. um, was an unhealthy person. That's right. It's, so it's not just they yeah. wore the mask as a defense because they needed it because they're weak, uh, physically weak and susceptible. Mm -hmm. And so they needed the, the, the physical uh, protection of the mask, whatever that would have been. But it's like, no, they... Um, mentally to get rid of the physical just mentally yep. these people are of a, a different frame of mind these are weak yeah. minded not just weak yeah. bodied but weak minded people who yeah. easily are susceptible to mm -hmm. every single play and i think part of it has to do with the fact that yeah they're not christian they're not you know well, but part of it also has to do with like they're 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 eating poison yeah for and, breakfast lunch, and, and they've dinner. always listened to the conventional wisdom from on high yeah. about everything right including their diet they've been told no this is a healthy diet that i'm eating i'm not doing anything wrong i'm 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 eating low fat food, you know things yeah, like that. Yeah. I'm not I'm eating. Oh, I'm not going to touch any egg yolks. That's going to give me heart disease. Right. And meanwhile, they're they're over three bills, and and it's like no, that everything they've told you about nutrition and diet has been a lie. And what else are they telling you that you should do that is also not true? Like you cannot right. trust any of this. We were talking before, like we we uh, uh, started recording about. Um, just the idea that eggs are bad for you and where that came from. I mean, it came from the, the 1960s when Lyndon Johnson was president and there was a ton of inflation and the price of eggs kept going up. And so he wanted people to stop buying eggs. So he said, oh, it gives you heart disease. He had like the FDA <laughs> tell everybody to do that, to, to, you know, view uh, eggs as the, you know, cause of heart attacks. And then people stop eating eggs and the egg prices go down. And that's remained with us for like 50 or 60 years this idea that, oh, eggs are going to kill me if I eat eggs, when they're like the most healthy thing that human beings have eaten since, uh, you know, since, uh, since Adam is in the garden, right? right. You know, like, right. Like, and so I'm sure there was a chicken there, right? Yeah. Laying eggs. And so anyway, were you like, debating uh, between yeah. since, since Noah or wait? No, I think eggs I, might it have was been, in my mind yeah, for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, you could eat eggs, no, no, uh, eggs before were cool. the fall. Eggs were yeah. cool, yeah, yeah. And we could get before into the Herman Bob Inc., you know, pre lapsarian right. argument. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I think meat was always going to be on the menu. But I yeah. think so too. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, uh, at, at any rate, like all of this is, is, is manufactured from the top down and they, they give these dictates like the food pyramid and eggs being bad for you and all of this kind of stuff. When you look at how human beings have lived throughout all time and it's completely backwards yep. and, and then you're told like, well, no, like it, you even have reports every once in a while where it's like lifting weights is bad for you. That causes heart attacks. You know, you don't do it. And and it, it's insane that this is pushed so hard on, on all of these people. And there's just this implicit trust in the system 
that the system will take care of me. I'll, I'll, they will come up with some magical Star Trek medical cure to heal me of whatever disease. I'll just get another, I'll just take, you know, I already take three dozen pills. I'll just take one more. And, and that's how people in that, that mindset uh, live their life. Right. Yeah. The danger of centralized power is often represented by the word king. As Americans, we hate the word king. Civilian ownership of body armor is about helping people to have increased power to resist tyrants and criminals. And so Armored Republic is about helping you to preserve your God-given rights to the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the king of kings and he governs kings and he will judge them. This is Armored Republic and in a republic, there is no king but Christ. We are free craftsmen and we are honored to be your armor spread of choice. So how, what, what do we do? This is a question that I, you know, my wife and I have talked through. Um, what do we do as Christian men who want to resource at the end of the day, you know, we're going to be the head of our homes but our wives are going to be doing most of the food type activities, you know, like, yeah. like whether it's shopping or like, you know, as, as men are working to be providers out of the home, the wife is managing the resources mm -hmm. of her husband within the home. She's doing the shopping. She's doing a lot of the cooking and those kinds of things. And my wife is making those decisions underneath, you know, my guidance, but I'm trusting her as viceroy of mm -hmm. our home to make mm -hmm. those decisions, which are massive. Like what, yeah. what are our four children going to eat? You know, and mm -hmm. like, it's a massive amount of responsibility. Now here's the mm -hmm. thing. A lot of the resources out there uh, that my wife could, you know, that are at her disposal, how do I disciple my wife in such a way that she can get good resources for diet, for food, for those things uh, without necessarily um, becoming a libtard? <laughs> right because yeah. you know what i mean so like how so how do we as christians mm -hmm. uh, as christian men but then also with our wives encourage them to embrace good healthy eating practices without becoming granola crunchy mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh dreadlock you know well, lit and, and move yeah. to portland you yeah know, yeah like, I, I think some of those people um there's an there's enough disparity in like the goals that you're after anyway that you're not going to go down all the same roads as them because I mean a lot of them ended up being vegan and right. things like that, um, but I think the few big keys is all right. There's this there's this compound that used to only be used as a you know industrial byproduct uh, called you know soybean oil and corn oil. And it was only used for paint thinner before we had latex paints. That's what it was used for. And then they s discovered, Hey, we can put it in food and replace, uh, <laughs> replace animal fat and butter and things like that. And it, it's really useful. It's very stable. Um, but to produce it, 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 um, it's produced at such high heat and it breaks down the fats. And I'm, you know, I'm not, um, a biologist and I, I'm not going to pretend to be one, you know, these, these, you know, I think like omega six fats, like they, they just, or omega threes, right. They, they attack your body and they, they make, um, they make it extremely hard to lose the fat that you gain. Uh, and, um, there's all sorts of other problems with them. Um, and so if you're able to excise those things from your diet, but if you go to the store and you look at the ingredient on everything, it, one of the first two or three ingredients in in the box or on the jar of whatever you buy is going to be canola oil, vegetable oil, corn oil, soy oil, and if you get rid of those things, it's amazing. Like I, I that's what I did. I just went through our whole pantry and got the garbage can over. I'm just like gone, gone, gone. Miracle Whip gone, you know, and and it's like oh well, my wife's like, how are we gonna? All the mayonnaise has you know, corn oil or soybean oil in it. Like, how are we going to have mayonnaise? And like, well, let's just go on the internet. How do you make mayonnaise uh, without seed oils? And you get avocado oil, which is not a seed oil. Uh, and you, you put a, you put a cup of that in an egg and you put it through the blender and boom, you have the best tasting mayonnaise you've ever had in your life. And, it, and so like examples like that where, or even better, my favorite substitute for mayonnaise is no mayonnaise. 
<laughs> well, I'm from the Midwest, uh, Joel. Okay. That's not an option. Uh, <laughs> that's not an option. <laughs> you can't get rid of that is if you're yeah. in the Midwest. But uh, it, it is, you know, things like that where it's like, and it's simple. This is how people used to live is they just wouldn't, they wouldn't go to the store to buy it. They would take the whole ingredients and make the stuff. And, right. and of course there's more work, right? You have to make it every couple of days. It only stays fresh for like a week. Uh, but that should be a thing in your head. Like, all right, if the stuff that I buy at the store doesn't stay fresh for very long, it's actually good <laughs> because if it's not going bad, what is in it that right. is keeping it from going bad? Right. Uh, this is actually real food that I can, my body is designed to digest and process. Um, so going through your, your pantry, like getting rid of, of seed oils and, and just being intentional about like the food that you're going to eat that week. Like what is are we going to have? Is coffee a seed oil? No, no, no. There, there are oils. In it. Yeah, it's, it's no, it's not. I've heard uh, some people like I've, I've seen some memes where like <laughs> that moment you realize coffee is a seed oil. You're like, no, no, no. Coffee, no. Coffee is is fantastic for. It. That's the other thing too. Is like in losing weight. I drank a lot more coffee and a lot more caffeine. Yeah, and it's it's it also like sates your appetite. Right, like you're not. Um, I was not as hungry as yep. as often drinking so much caffeine and 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 so. Like things like that though. Like if you, if you make food, like real food, like today we're going to have a chicken and we're going to roast the chicken in the oven and we're going to have some potatoes with it. And like, that's our meal. We didn't get anything out of a box. We just made it ourselves. And that takes time. It's more work for her and, and for me when I cook, but um, it's, it's a valuable investment in time. It's like, oh, I guess I get to watch one less episode of, of, you know, something on Netflix tonight, mm -hmm. you know, I'd spent more time cooking. Oh, what a, what a tragedy. Right. You know, like I, most people actually have way more time than they think they do, <laughs> uh, to make, to make food. And it's such a vital investment of time. Um, because I always tell people this same thing with like working out, like I, I'll spend, you know, an hour a day working out and that's a huge investment of time. Gym costs money, all of these things like that. But it's like, I don't know when I'm 70 or 80 years old, am I going to be able to retire? Is there going to be any, is there going to be an economy left <laughs> when I'm 70 or 80 yeah. years old to retire into? I'm going to have to keep working the rest of my life. Uh, so I need to be healthy. Uh, yeah. So the, the time I'm spending now trying to be healthy, the money I'm spending on good food to be healthy um, is an investment where I'm thinking down the road, you know, 50 years from now. It, it's um, always, you're, what, you're, what keeps coming up is there's, there's these trade-offs, right? You're, yeah. you're, you're spending an hour a day to, to work out and doing whatever you're doing. Um, what you're not seeing though, is the time that you're gonna be spending, you know, at the dialysis office yeah. or, yeah. or yeah. whatever, you know, whatever your ailments are. I mean, you, we all have, you know, grandparents that they, they have a doctor's appointment every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and my dad right now, every single day. Every single yeah. day, they, they, they spend however much time it takes to, for them to do that. Um, it's a trade-off. Yeah. You know, you, you, I mean, obviously there's some situations where you have to go, but yeah. the time you take now is time that you're adding later. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what right. I mean? And, and, and I think, and also the time that you spend now working out, I mean, even just think about, you know, yourself, you know, before you start, st started losing weight, mm -hmm. um, chances are you were probably slower in everything that you did. Yes. Even waking up. Oh yeah. Even, you know, yeah. all this stuff, Right. This is all stuff that that you mm -hmm. that you you took the trade off. Mm -hmm. It really isn't detracting anything from your day. It's actually no. adding to your day. Yeah, yeah, and right. you have yeah. more energy during the day to do things. Yeah, uh, and you get th more things done, even though you're spending uh, more time doing something else. Yeah, uh, right. In, li in in lifting and working out. Yeah, my, and I'll say this as a personal thing. My 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 younger brother had a, a medical incident uh, this this year, and you know I thought he was going to die. I really did. Mm. Um, and he kind of had a, a, a moment where he's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm dying. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If I don't mm -hmm. do something about this, I'm going to be dead. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have my wife with my, with the four kids all alone and all of this stuff. And so these are things that like, even if you don't have an incident like that, mm -hmm. you don't want to like, you don't want to wait until you have an incident exactly. like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. absolutely. And, and it, like, like you said, the, the investment is worth it when you think about down the road, long-term, like I want to be able to, when I'm 70 or 80 years old, be able to go out hiking and, and go out doing things with Throw my, a football with your grandkids, something. Yeah, I want to be able to do stuff. Yeah. I don't want to to be sick if if I can avoid it. Sometimes, you know, it's it's not in our power. Like you, of course. you, you might be sick, you might have a health incident that is not something you could have avoided, 
but a lot of them are avoidable. So many, so much of chronic disease and things like this is avoidable. And, and we have this like, um, Gnostic impulse generally in the church where, um, where we just don't care about that down the road. It's like, well, heaven is my home, not the earth. And so whatever my physical condition is, that's, you know, that's, that, that's whatever I'm going to have a new glorified body in heaven. And that's my real body. And, and it's like, no, like the, the flesh and blood body you have right now will be resurrected, but this is your body that you have that got the one that God has given you and you need to take good care of it. Uh, not just for your own sake, but for the sake of your family and your children and your grandchildren. Right. Um, I mean, I, I don't think that many people our age, even even Christians, even like Reformed Christians, think that often about their grandchildren. Yeah, right? that's, that's um, such a good point. I mean, I'm thinking about my kids all, the, all day long, but I'm like, I need to also be thinking, all right, this little person that I'm disciplining right now, one day he's going to be me and doing the same thing I'm doing right now. And I need to be in this moment training him to be me. Right. Right. And, and it's the same thing with, with our, 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 our physical bodies, how we, how we eat and how we, how we train. Um, I want to, to do it, not just to, um, be in great shape myself, but also lead my children into that way of life, uh, for the sake of their children. And so that I can, I can see them as well and, and grow up <laughs> and they could grow up having a grandpa. Right. Uh, and right now when you're in your thirties, you don't think about that stuff at all. You know, you don't think about your grandkids and, and the, uh, inheritance you're, you're going to give them. Um, you're thinking about just making it through the day, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. uh, but it's, it's important it, and it's, and it's, it flies right in the face of just the, the Gnostic impulse that, that so many Christians have to think about long-term what your life will be like in 20 or 30 years, uh, because it comes fast. Like you, it's, it's also like the, the, um, uh, the Hemingway quote, you know, you did from earlier, like, how did, how did you gain 400 pounds? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, well, first slowly. And then, then it all came suddenly. It's yep. like all of a sudden I had to, I had to buy size 42 pants and I didn't know where that came from, you know? And, and it's like, I, like, that's the big thing that hits you is when you have to buy bigger and bigger clothes. Like, Oh honey, I think you shrunk my shirt again in the dryer. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have to get some new clothes. Right. And it's like, no, you just got fatter, man. Yeah. Like uh, <laughs> you, you need fatter. to lose weight. And, and, uh, it, it comes on real slow and then all of a sudden you're huge and you don't even realize it. And, and it's much slower to take it off. And right. the older you get, the harder it is. So like when you're our age, like every pound is, is like <laughs> any, when you're in your twenties, it's like, Oh, I could lose 10 pounds in a week, you know? Right. Um, but, uh, that is, that I think is so, so crucial because it, again, like the, the physiological changes and the mental and emotional changes that happen to you when you no longer are a bug man that can, that will crumple. Um, there, there was a, you know, someone shared a video and went, it went, ran around online, um, a couple of years ago where there was this scrawny guy working at like a Lowe's and he's up on a lift and he's taking something down. It's not super heavy, but like, um, it's a thing that like the three of us, we would just pick up and put back on the shelf, but it's like falling on him and he's, he's screaming like a baby and, and crying. He's just a stick, just, you know, uh, chicken arms and chicken legs and just whimpering and crying. And like everyone around is laughing at him. It's so sad. And I'm thinking like, I know I'm thinking like, (laughs) Oh, if only, you know, he would pick up a barbell, like this would not have happened to him. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and just the the attitude he had was just like a helpless child. Like he was like, he was five years old and, and a bookcase fell on top of him. And it's like, and it's like, what is going on? Why is, why, what, how can you live this way, man? Like it's tied together. And that's, that's what you're saying. You know, we keep saying the word Gnostic and like Gnosticism, you know, at at one level, like at the root, you know, just to explain it for the listener, it's secret knowledge, you know, Gnosis. All right. So this idea of secret knowledge, and there's usually an elite group that says, you know, we're the enlightened ones and you Mm -hmm. can be enlightened too. We'll show you the path usually for a fee, you know, and that Mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know, so we'll let you into this secret, you know, this, this secret society that will give you this secret gnosis, Mm -hmm. enlighten you so that you can know these things that, you know, that everybody out there doesn't know. Um, But there's also an element of like the Gnostics, whether it be like in the apostle John and during his day, you know, he, he really combats them and, his first epistle, uh, First John, and but a lot of the Gnostics in the first century, uh, it was the secret gnosis, but it was also they viewed the body as a prison. 
Uh, they had a yeah. very low view of the body. Now, they, this was the minority report, but I, I appreciate them because why not? You know, if, you, if you're going to view the body as a prison, the minority report was like, well, then, you know, eat, drink for tomorrow we die, mm -hmm. right? So just let's go hardcore and pleasure. And mm -hmm. we'll, you know, because ultimately it's like the soul is what's pure and undefiled. And the soul is going to be freed by the destruction of the body. Mm -hmm. So most of them scourged the body, you know, so it mm -hmm. was, you know, it was uh, flogging, it was yeah. fa constant fasting. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of this even seeped into various, you know, portions of Christianity or yeah. kind of like neo-Christian, whether it be yeah, with the Eastern Orthodoxy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. You're, you're sleeping on planks that have mm -hmm. cracks open in them so that the cool air you know mm -hmm. will like so you're you're just miserable all night long you mm -hmm. know or like mm -hmm. um you know so all these different things you know that you know uh, that you're self-inflicting pain beating down the body starving yourself and then the minority report like i said they were like well we'll destroy the body the other way you yeah know? so it's yeah. just the indulging it yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so then that's where you know you get your you know michael uh you know what's his michel foucault uh, yeah, uh, yeah, michel yeah. foucault i can't ever say <laughs> michel foucault you yeah, know it's yeah. just like well but you're you're gonna get aids and die and he's like don't care don't care yeah. it's worth it sex is life yeah. so but my point is all that is that uh, you matter know, they view is bad the exactly yeah. matter yeah. is bad the soul the spirit is the only thing that's good and and yet, there is so much of the church that thinks that way. And what you were yeah. saying earlier, uh, it's not just that the guy is a beanpole, you know, and and a medium-sized box is crushing him. Yeah. It's also his reaction that he's crying. Yeah. And and whimpering, whimpering like a girl. Yeah. And so yeah. and so my point is that like um even when it comes to pastorally with you know counseling people, um, it's like I'm depressed, you know, or I'm struggling with anxiety, or mm -hmm. these like, okay, well, here's some Bible. We're going to go to the Word of God. The mm -hmm. Word of God is sufficient for all of life. Mm -hmm. And the Word of God is going to say, have no fear. And the Word of God is going to talk about, you know, cast your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Uh, the Word of God is going to, it's going to say all these things. But then the Word of God is also going to tell us um, that, uh, well, like, go to sleep on time. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like you're, you're, you are a body. Like, I, I am I'm way more at peace in my 30s than I was in my 20s um, simply just by having better habits, by ha yeah. having better diet, going to bed at a better time, waking up at a better time, and also just having something to do. Having a wife and four kids and a job, mm -hmm. you know, keeps me busy to where I don't have all this free time where I'm, mm -hmm. you know, doing introspection and navel gazing mm -hmm. and thinking about, you know, all the, you know, the deepest fears in the world. So all mm -hmm. that being said, my, my point is, uh, you can grow in mental fortitude. You can grow in spiritual fortitude. You, mm -hmm. uh, but also growing in physical uh, fortitude and being uh, not made of glass and like yeah. actually having grit, physical grit. Yeah. Um, a, a guy, typically, uh, now of course there are exceptions, but typically a guy who has grit physically mm -hmm. um, usually has some mental stamina as well. Yeah. Like he's yeah. not going to easily you know you couldn't just run a psyop on him and he'd be and you know buckle. and yeah, yeah in yeah. 15 minutes like yeah. you'd have to you yeah. would have to try you know it, it, yeah. it'd be pretty tough <clears throat> yeah so. well i think to, to to get the physical fortitude it takes mental fortitude to do that yes right. you know what i mean it, it takes something in you to you know go to the gym for an hour every day mm -hmm. and you know and, and and this is the thing too like you know some some guys will say oh it's ridiculous for you to encourage christian men to go to the gym because you know gyms didn't exist back in in jesus's day or yeah. you know I, or, or me and my friends you know we well, we they work, did actually but yeah right. <laughs> we were, <laughs> okay, there you go we'll talk about that in a where minute. did the word come from <laughs> but um yeah, but 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 you know, or me and my friends, you know, we we work for a living. We never hit the gym, but we're st plenty strong. And that's great. Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. All that yeah. stuff takes mental fortitude too to to go yeah. out and do a, a, a trades job yeah. every day. Yeah. But the reality for a lot of people today is that we sit behind a computer to work. Right. Yeah. Right. And so I'm not. If I'm sitting behind the computer, I'm not. You know, we're building a building. I'm not yeah. doing that. So the gym is actually important for me because right. otherwise I would just be sitting at a at a desk. Right. Yeah. You, you yeah, know what I mean? No, totally. Getting that's not fatter. what we're saying. We're, yeah. Like, we're, yeah, I've I've seen some of that online too. Where yeah. it's like, well, you know, uh, gym is worldly. Like, uh, you know, and, and exactly what you said. Like, what if you're just working outside with the job? Okay. And great. Great. We weren't yeah. saying we weren't <laughs> saying that the gym beats that. We were yeah. talking to the average person whose right. job is. Well, you're, yeah, you're just sitting inside. Or, like, or you're studying for, you know, yeah. you know, you're reading, you're writing yeah, sermons. Like my job, yeah, right. yeah, my job is, um, 
you know, the, the, the greatest physical, you know, uh, risk that I run is, is my hand cramping as I'm turning a page. Sure. Reading. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Like that's, that's just the nature of yeah. my job. And now yeah. that I have a son, like, how is your workman's you know, policy? Like, for yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, we don't have one, uh, but you know, but now that I have a son, like I'm thinking about starting a business and not even for an extra stream of, of, of revenue or income, but like some kind of business that has nothing to do with ministry, uh, whether it's like uh, TV installs, uh, like yeah. like TV you know mount installs, or uh, uh, going or, you know just assembling trampolines every time mm. somebody gets one. I'm, I think mm. you know Christmas light business that sees oh, yeah. yeah. hang them up. But my my thought is for it to be physical, and it's not even so much about the income. Although I do want to teach them you know the, the economic money, side yeah, of it. Yeah. But the biggest thing is just so that uh, dad and son can go do some work together. Mm -hmm. So that we can go and do something physical, even if it's five hours a week or, mm -hmm. or, you know, or maybe it's 15 hours a week, but just during, you know, one season a year, mm -hmm. but because, because that means something. And the, mm -hmm. but then the rest of the year, if you're 40, 50 years old and there's none of that, your, your whole vocation is indoors. Mm -hmm. That's fine. We're not saying that, that that's not, not godly or, or that it's bad, course, but we're just yeah. saying, but, but then you should make it up because if not, no. you're going to be a fat lard and yeah. and and you're not just going to be a fat lard, but your um your your physical fatness will become fatness of the soul. Yeah. You are not; it is not divorced. You will be lazy in soul. You will be lazy yeah. in spirit. You will be a sluggard. The sluggard yeah. puts he digs his hand into the di uh, the dish, but doesn't have you know enough you know strength to bring it back to his mouth. Yeah. And you like it, it's not just oh here's the body here's you know here's my soul. Uh, these things they're they not, flow. They're connected. They yeah. flow back and forth. Absolutely. And you see guys today who who are out of shape, who are are lazy in the physical realm. Um, and you know what? Uh, it's the irony is this: uh, as they're combating us on on Twitter, uh, you know what they're doing? Uh, their, their theological arguments are just as lazy as their gym habits. <laughs> it's laziness across the board. They're yeah. theologically lazy. No, and it makes me think yeah. about, you know, we, we've, I think, mentioned a few times, like, the possibility of a draft in World War III and things like that, you know, and and, and even though the official draft age, like, we're all older, I think, than, uh, than what it is right now, but during World War II, they made it to, like, age 60, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have, like, um, what is the Tom Hanks uh, D-Day movie, uh, um, Saving Private yeah, Ryan? Yeah. Like, he gets drafted as a school teacher in his 40s, right? You mm -hmm. know, and it's like, that, that really did happen. Um, and I think about these guys, and I'm like... All right, if there's a draft, would they take you to mm. go fight? <laughs> right. <laughs> and if they wouldn't, like you should feel bad about that. Right. Yeah. Like if you've made yourself so physically unfit that you couldn't go fight for your country if it was being invaded, um, that's not good. Right. That's bad. And I'll I'll never forget there was a time where uh, a friend of mine, um, you know, I brought him to my gym and it was a you know, just a real basic uh, workout, but I wanted him to get, you know, start getting in shape. I'm trying to you know, pushing them like, oh, yeah, you need to get, you need to get fit, man. And there were, uh, in the workout, there were box jumps, right? And, you know, you, you jump onto the box and those are always a little bit dangerous because if you miss, right, you hit the corner of the box and just smash your shin. Like you walked into a trailer Oof, hitch, right? Right. Really, really hurts. Well, you know, after a couple box jumps, he did that. And, um, I'll, I'll never forget it. Like he, he started like whimpering and, and like, crying like like at, at like a little girl and i'm and i'm telling him, like man stop that you're stop. gonna embarrass me in front of everybody <laughs> like, don't do that stop stop and he like through tears is like i just don't get why you have to pretend it doesn't hurt and i'm like dude because you're a man you're a man that's why and i'm like in the moment i'm not thinking of like okay do i give him a bible verse right <laughs> but when when these guys make these arguments you know it's like the same thing it's like well where in the bible does it tell me chapter and verse that uh that if i smash my shin on a on a box jump that i can't cry like a little girl <laughs> like where you know tell me where being a man means not crying and, pre right. and pretending it doesn't hurt it's like that's that's what it means to be it means, like being strong and courageous means right when something hurts you don't let it show mm -hmm. right you don't you you just tough it out and keep going that's right. And, that's right. And 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 I, I, I it's a thing I just never had to think about. Like no one ever was like, yeah. But why do I have to pretend that I'm like, well, I've never thought about it. You just do. Yeah. Right. right. You just have. But to. there are reasons. Yeah. It is. It should be instinct for a man, and yeah. for a lot of us, it has been instinct by the grace of God, God's common grace, even before we were converted. But for the record. Uh, we can give chapter and verse, and not chapter and verse explicitly, mm -hmm. but we can look at the whole of Scripture, and yeah. we can apply the general equity of certain principles in Scripture and say, well, th this is why. 
Mm -hmm. um, like one of the reasons why a man shouldn't cry like a little girl is um, if he's a husband and a father, particularly one, if he's not a husband and father, he should be trying to win a, win a wife. Become one. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, women aren't, aren't attracted to a man who is crying all the time yeah. because, but there's a reason it's, it's instinct, but instinct nature is, you know, grace uh, restores nature, right? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. abolish nature. And so, um, so there's there there are theological reasons for that. The reason why a woman doesn't want to uh, marry a crying, sniveling man um, is because she is looking for a provider and a protector. Yeah. So she's looking for strength, right? And the reason why a man who once he is married, you know, before married, he's trying to attract a woman, so he wants to play the man. Once he is yeah. married and has children, same thing. Um, like I don't want my children to know how how um, I don't want my children to know how bad things are. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. I'm not saying not ever, but I'm going to introduce my yeah. children to trash world. Yeah. Uh, uh, progressively over time as, as, they're ready. as they're ready. Yeah. Right absolutely. now. And for the record, for those who listen, because I always get in trouble with this kind of stuff, you know, I'll say like, you know, <laughs> I even tell my children what time to, uh, you know, when to go to the bathroom. People are like, he tells his 17 year old son. <laughs> You know, like they immediately assume Dad, that. Dad, I gotta go. They no, immediately assume that because, because they hate me. You know, uh, you know, they couldn't possibly, you know, give it a, a you know, a, 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 you know, good faith listening. But anyways, my kids are, you know, five, uh, five, four, uh, three, and one. So five, four, mm. three, and one. Um, but with that, it's like uh, right now, the economy is horrible. Mm -hmm. Everything costs uh, way more, yeah. exponentially more than it did for my parents. Oh, yeah. um, it's almost impossible to own a home. God has been gracious to us to mm -hmm. where we do own a home. Mm -hmm. We got in right before interest rates started to skyrocket, all mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Um, so so God has been kind to us. But right now, the world is a mess. Economically, it's a mess. And uh, when when my wife and I talk about these things, we don't talk about it in front of the kids. Yeah. So all that yeah. back to the illustration of, of your friend crying. And I, well, mm -hmm. I just don't understand why, you know, like if it hurts, I can't show it. <laughs> Uh, for, well, for the same reason that that my wife and I, uh, there's there's some moments where you know where we might feel like crying. Yeah, uh, things are so bad, you know. But we don't we don't do that in front of the kids. Yeah, She'll I do it in front them. of me. Yeah. yeah, when the kids aren't there. If the yeah. kids are around, even though she she's the weaker vessel, she's my wife. I want to be compassionate. I will, tell, sweetheart. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, get it together. Yeah, this this I'll reminds whisper me. Her, get it together. <laughs> this reminds me of a, a time my um my pastor in college, best pastor I ever had. He um my wife's best friend was getting married and they were having um, the groom's dinner at a park and we're, we're sitting in this, this beautiful park and going to have a great time. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, this massive thunderstorm comes and a tornado later touched down like almost where we were and lightning is striking. Like, like it's the artillery barrage and band of brothers and like tree branches are falling down everywhere. And I'm, you know, I'm maybe 22 years old and I'm, I'm losing it. You know, I'm like, we're all going to die. We got to get out of here. <laughs> and my pastor is there and he has his teenage and preteen kids, all five of them there with him. And he's just as stoic as if nothing was going on. He's just like, okay, honey, why don't you get the car? We'll just sit right here. And he was as calm as could be. And I was like, whoa, that's a man. Yeah. And he's yeah. not. And he wasn't like a huge bodybuilder. Right. Like he was just, he's, you know, he would, he'd be the first to tell you he's just a, a scrawny pencil neck guy. Yeah. You know, and he's just like, things are fine. We're going to be fine. Kids, you're, just sit right here. Yeah. And just as calm as can be. And it's like, man, I would follow that guy into war. Oh, yeah. You know, like oh, yeah. I, wa I want him leading. Right. Uh, like that's a man. Like that's, that is the, the masculine temperament you should have. And it was just like such a contrast to my oh, the trick. Like, and the trick there is. This shit. Oh, the, the, yeah. the trick there is that that guy was probably scared. he was terrified he was yeah. probably he told me full later of fear. he was terrified yeah <laughs> he thought we were gonna die <laughs> but you can't let everybody know that right you know like, well, it's, it's it's hard for my son to understand my, my eight year old you know he 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 always wonders how can I be courageous when I'm so scared well that's well that's the point of courage that's like, how right? that's yeah. that's how you do it it's <laughs> yeah. like you're you're afraid but you do what you got to do anyway yeah right. you just don't think about it yeah, right. yeah. It, 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 the fear doesn't go away right that's <laughs> yeah. right yep yep that's right well i guess we can land the plane with this one but don't be fat some takeaways right yeah. so don't be fat fat don't pastors be gay. no bueno <laughs> yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah yeah be strong yeah. and courageous be strong and courageous uh never say die you know and, like all these, <laughs> uh, and, stay dangerous uh, yeah you know, stay all dangerous these, be hard uh, to kill yeah um and and don't be a gnostic and, and recognize that yeah. yeah we we want to be men who love the word of god who study you know meditate upon the word of god day and night 
Uh, but we also, um, physical training, it's funny, you know, people will be like, well, physical training is of- Profit is like, little. Profit, <laughs> li yeah, but it's it's of some value. The Bible yeah, doesn't say it's of no- value. It's, it's yeah. not no value. Yeah. Physical training has value. It, it has, has value. And the only reason why it's some is in comparison to godliness, which has yeah. infinite value. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why it says, you know, some mm -hmm. is because it's a comparing and contrast yeah. in, in, the, in the context of that verse. Um, but it has a, a lot of like, it has some value in the sense of um, not being on dialysis for 80 yeah. years has value. Yeah, yeah, it's not ultimate value. Right, it's not ultimate value, yeah. salvific, eternal with, with Jesus, but... There's it's value. A, but 80-year value yeah. is... It has, yeah. it has more value than um, at least equal value. Wealth and health, Yeah. right? So the Bible doesn't pro promise them that we're not, yeah. we're not prosperity gospel guys, but wealth and health. You have to work health. for it. Both yeah, of them. both of them. You have to work for it. And are there exceptions? Sure, you can uh, get cancer at thirty, even though you you were uh, eating right and, and working yeah. out. And um, you can have economic disaster uh, befall. Mm -hmm. You know, but in both cases, we would say as a man, both in terms of health and in terms of wealth, uh, we have people who are depending on us, and mm -hmm. we want to be. Uh, a rock for them. Yeah. We want because we're modeling, and we know we're not a rock. Jesus is the rock. Yeah. None of this is idolatrous. None yeah. of this is replacing yeah. Christ. But we're emu emulating Christ. Husbands love your wives as Christ loves yeah. the church. My wife, yeah. when she's looking to me, I'm supposed to be representing Christ to her in yeah. the same way, in a different way, um, but the same principle. I'm I'm also representing uh, God to my children, mm -hmm. a, a father, and uh, and and so I want my kids, especially in their younger years. They should implicitly at this age, five, four, three, and one. My, my kids should implicitly think uh, that there's nothing that dad can't do, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and that if I'm ever in trouble, just run to dad. Yeah, right. And that's good. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's going to carry on with them. And I'm mm -hmm. going as they age. I, I'm doing it now, but I will continue even more and more to just set their gaze and turn it from me more and more to their heavenly Father. Yeah, yeah. And say now, because as they get older, my 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 oldest daughter, when she's seven or eight, she's going to start realizing, oh, dad, dad fails. Dad can't. Yeah, he can't. And do that. and then, yeah. I, and, but then, but then I'll say, yeah, but he can't. Yeah, he can't. Yeah. But but the, for the principle to be ingrained from from the time that they were babies of like fathers are not weak and sniveling. Yeah, Fathers right, don't yeah. cry when they hit their shin. Yeah, Father, yeah, like yeah, like yeah. just the other day, like a complete opposite to that example you get, but just the other day, like uh, I got some, some, I can't remember what it was, but something like fell on me and hit me and the and the girl <laughs> saw it. Yeah, And they're like, yeah. oh, dad, oh, dad, okay? dad, dad, dad. <laughs> yeah, and, and I just, you know, face like was just I'm fine. still, you know, unfaced. Like, <laughs> and it's like, I'm fine. And they're like, how? How are you fine? Yeah. I would have cried for all, you know, all like, day. How, yeah, how are, you, how are you fine? How are you not? Because they're thinking like they would have been in tears, yeah, you know, and they yeah. and they would have. They're I'm like, how are you fine? You. How are you okay? <laughs> and but even then, I was able to give praise, like yeah. do your good deeds before men that yeah, they may yeah. praise your Father in heaven. Yeah, so I yeah, turn it yeah. to the Lord. I said, uh, because God is a good God, and He made Dad as strong. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's why good. I'm okay. Yeah, you know, I like so, that. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, want to end there? Good. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, yeah. I, I think we have an American audience, mostly Western civilization for sure. People are watching your show. Physical strength is of some value, but if you're watching this show, you're an American. It has a lot more value than you think it does. Right. Yeah, it's as simple right. as that. You yeah, undervalue the some value in the Bible is way more because these <laughs> these are people that walked everywhere all day, <laughs> right? And, <laughs> and like did like hard work. Uh, we sit behind computers all day and yeah. don't, right. and and so it's it's of more value, re relatively speaking. Absolutely, right. Well said. All right. Did you like the episode? Great. You want to watch the next one? Wait a whole week or. Go to patreon.com right response ministries. Again, patreon.com right response ministries. Binge the whole season right now. What are you waiting for?